and welcome to the second video in this the kingdom lives of An the amazing lives of animals like series and this one is going is titled as you probably knew when you clicked on it or if i sent you the link and you saw when you read it friends with benefits now those of you who clicked on it because you saw that and you thought it was something dirty shame on you no bad this is about the symbiotic relationships in the animal kingdom and today's episodes will be over mutualistic relationships where both where both parties benefit from something from whatever they have connect like whatever they're doing i'm going to start with one of my personal fav not one of my personal favorite mutualistic relationships and it's not well it's not that well known but it's between ants and a and a certain species of acacia trees I could not figure out what exactly that species was, and it annoys me. But acacia trees have thorns like on the branches around the leaves, so that way it's harder for animals to get to them, except for giraffes, which have adapted to be able to eat around the thorns, and some even have been able to eat the thorns. But with that, there's also, with this certain species, it has these hollow bits just at the base of the thorn and for the longest time scientists had no idea why they had these bit like hollow areas underneath the thorns and it has a little hole well don't have the hole sorry it just has these little hollow areas inside inside like the like just at the base of the thorn so they're like okay that's weird then they found out what the hole was for a certain species of ant that's extremely violent lives in that specific species of acacia tree and they use those trees like in the holes as their nest areas they dig a hole like um carve a hole into it and that's what they make their homes the plant gets protection from the ants that end up like really defending the tree because that's where they live and also they're just super aggressive period and the ants get a free place to live that they don't have to fight anything for, and it's up in the trees, so it's a little safer than being on the ground where a whole bunch of ant eaters can come and get you, or ant eaters or any other animals that would end up eating them can get you. So both parties end up benefiting from the from this relationship. I found that as one of my favorites because it's interesting to see relation, relationships between plants and animals. Everyone's heard of the clownfish and ooh, everyone's heard of the clownfish and sea anemone, or even the what, what is that? Ah, oh, what is it like? Um, cleaner fish with other animals. So I thought I'd bring out some of the lesser known ones. Another one yet again involves ants, and it's it's the um, ants and aphid farms. This one blows me away every time I hear about it, and I've even seen it happening, where ants will collect aphids and they'll put them on a specific stalk, and at any given time they'll have a few ants around around them. The aphids eat, the aphids eat, and they produce this little liquid. It's sort of like it's it's like a sugar waterish liquid from like from their back and the ants farm them to get that liquid. Now, both parties end up benefiting because the ants protect the aphids and the aphids give the ants food. And it's amazing because you see, because I've seen some of them like in images where it's literally just this whole like tree branch has been taken just for the ants to use as aphid farming. And there's thousands of them there and the ants are just walking around picking up the dew and stuff that they, that they secrete and I gotta hand it to them. They're extremely smart for thinking, for like doing that. But also, it's amazing for the aphid because now they have a safe area to be because they have a amazing guard system. Ants, I mean, you don't mess with ants. You don't, I mean, yeah, you may mess with one or two of them, but when you have the whole colony there, it's like, I'll leave that to, to whoever wants to take that on. But to end this video for mutualism, yes, these will be short ones because it's a little mini-series, and 
Because to end this one is probably one of the... It's probably the best way to end it. Okay, imagine yourself. You're about two to three tons. You're n Walking, you're not that fast, but you can run about 35 miles per hour. You don't have really good vision. I mean, you can see 100 yards away pretty clear. I mean, you got... It's not like you're blind, but it's just the image is extremely fuzzy. You don't have the best hearing, but you can smell wonderfully. Like, I mean, you've got anything. So should a predator come, come towards you, you have two ways to defend yourself. One is to run away, or two, you have to go for a head-on collision with that animal to win. And you can't turn that fast, so chances are you most likely will, will have to run. Now, the animal I just explained is the rhinoceros, and it was a very general ex explanation for a rhino because there are so many different species and that's, well, less species now because they're ended up going extinct due to poaching and uh, that's, a, that's a topic for another video. But, so you really need some help. Enter the oxpecker. Now, also along with the rhino description, there's hardly an itch on your body you can scratch. So you don't have many options. Now you enter the oxpecker, set up earlier, and the oxpecker will be able to, one, clean you off of ticks and fleas and other insects. Two, it'll act as a warning system, like if you can't see something, they'll give out a call saying, hey, predator, that way. Hey, there's a lion. Hey, there's something that there's like a pack of hyenas that actually end up coming closer, close to us. Then you have a first line of defense of, hey, let's get out of here. And also, the oxpecker gets, it gets to eat. It has a pretty safe place to be. I mean, on top of a rhino, I can't think of many animals that would on purposely mess with the rhino just because. Um, and then you have, like, the fact that the oxpecker will do so many things on the back of a rhino because it's so safe. They do most of their breeding there. They do the, what is it, like mating rituals happens on the backs of animals because it's the safest place to be. And you're just a leg up on every other animal in the savannah. So that's why I just love that relationship. And as I end the episode, I think I'd have to ask, what are your favorite? Um, mutualistic somatic relationships i mean i gave you my three favorites um i'd love to hear what you guys like also at the like for this video there will not be a vote it will be after let's see there's going to be two more videos and at the end of the second one then the, we'll have a straw poll in the description but because you guys voted for the mini series is going to be three episodes of whatever that mini series is which happens to be the friends with benefits and next week will be commensalism, where one animal gets um, gets something in return, but the other animal is unaffected. And I have a really good one for that. I mean, I personally love this one. Yet again, it's between plant and animal, so I just, I love it. But I think that... I'm going to have to call that the end. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Share with someone who doesn't really know much about mutualistic relationships or someone who thinks that all animals are just all for one and one for all. And, yeah. I'd love to hear your comments on what your favorite symbiotic relationships are, even if it's not mutualistic in the comments. Just, like, I'd love to hear because... It's amazing to know that other that people know what symbiotic relationships are. So, without, well, without any other information to talk about, um, yeah, have a great day, and see you later.